People think that Qs will improve their form, but a lot of time they actually have the opposite effect because they're using them stupidly. These are the biggest mistakes I see and what you want to avoid if you want Qs to actually help your form. The first one is simply using too many Qs at once. It can be hard to actually lift a weight if we're trying to focus on so many different things. In fact, in modal learning research, it's been shown that consciously thinking of cues tends to decrease performance at first in people who are beyond the beginner stage. It seems counterintuitive, but it's because our motor cortex is actually really efficient. And cues in general have to be at a more subconscious movement pattern level before they actually start to improve our performance. Now on top of this, using multiple cues at once isn't really efficient for working on any of these individual cues in general. It's hard to execute any one single cue that well if we're trying to focus on multiple things at once. There's a good Ron Swanson quote, Never half-ass two things, always whole-ass one thing. Focus on one cue at a time and you'll execute it much better. And you'll actually probably ingrain multiple cues quicker doing it this way. When you focus on each individual cue fully, you can get it feeling comfortable much quicker. Now, another alternative here that lets you avoid the downside of cues decreasing performance is to use movement variations to force you to work a certain aspect of form. For example, if you're trying to cue somebody to descend with more control on squats, but the cues are throwing them off, instead you could just have them do a tempo squat. The slower movement will naturally teach them to have a smoother descent. The second issue I see is people forcing cues that do not work for them. Now it's easy to see a cue from a big, strong, smart, popular lifter, for example, an aesthetic, super strong, genius megastar like Matt Venna. But the reality is a cue that works well for one person may work terribly for another. We have different leverages, different needs. Don't try to force a square peg into a round hole. How many people try and squat or deadlift super upright when they just aren't built to lift that way? On top of that, sometimes just the way we word something will click for one person but not for another. Interestingly, this is something that elite people in many skills tend to struggle with. They often understand certain movements or skills very innately and intuitively, and the way they try to word it to others doesn't make sense to them. For example, if you looked up leg drive for bench press, you can probably find a dozen different videos that are all going to cue it a dozen different ways, even though they are all focusing on more or less the same concept. We want to make a cue work for us, not us work for the cue, so we just need to find which one will click in our head. Now the last major issue I see of cues is people obsessing with form to their own detriment. People often convince themselves that a certain technique is optimal or perfect. The fact of the matter is, there's a lot of wiggle room into what exactly is good form and it's going to depend on the individual characteristics and their goals. There can be massive variance in form at even an elite level and much fewer absolute rules than people think. People who assume there is some ideal perfect form are usually oversimplifying things because they don't understand the true complexity. So with that being said, how do you figure out what is true good form, especially when you see so many top level lifters and coaches disagreeing with each other? Well, luckily, there's a really simple rule that works really well. Just simply do what feels good. Like I said before, the motor cortex is actually really efficient. Following what it wants to do and what your body wants to do naturally, 95% of the time, that's going to be the best option. A lot of people worry about injury risk too. The fact of the matter is, there's virtually no evidence linking certain forms to injuries. I'll link to a good Barbell Medicine article going over the research on this. Yes, certain forms may load certain tissues more. For example, a high bar knee forward squat will load our quads and knee joint more. But if my knee or quad starts hurting, it's not necessarily that a form was inherently dangerous, it's just the fact that I overloaded my tissues. The dosage is the real issue, and form is just one variable, alongside exercise selection, volume, intensity, and frequency that we can manipulate to put load on or off certain tissues. Pain and injury actually do have a mental component as well, as the article I linked talks about. And worrying about certain forms causing injury actually increases your risk of pain and injury independently, linked to a study below on that as well. This third point can be summarized as no cue should affect you negatively mentally. You shouldn't be worried if a cue doesn't work for you, and don't be afraid that if you do or don't move in a certain way that you will get injured. So that's basically it. You don't want to use too many cues at once, just focus on one and do it well. Don't try to force cues to work for you, some aren't for everybody, and don't obsess about form to the point of neuroticism. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, and thanks for watching.